morning, everybody, and welcome to my channel, Stitching with the Dachshund. I hope this day is finding you all in a great mood and getting a lot of things done. It is February 16th. It's a beautiful day here in Central Texas, uh, and this is my floss tube number six. I've got my notes down here, so I'm trying to train myself not to look down as much, but I suck at that, so I'll probably be looking down. Um, been extremely busy, so uh, this video is not going to be long unless I get to rambling. Who knows? That can happen, right? Um, because we've been so busy, I haven't had a time to put in a lot of hours of uh, a lot of time into stitching. I have done some stitching, but like this last weekend, I did just enough stitching to keep my 365 days of cross stitch going and touching my illuminated manuscript every day. Um, and but I feel good about that because every little stitch matters. <laughs> well, little stitch matters. Anyway, uh, um, Saturday, I got 21 stitches in on it. That's better than none, but it helped me make my goal of stitching on it every day and making progress because I feel that if you skip one day, it's easier to skip the next day. And I really, really, really want to see this piece done. Uh, and it's not that I just want to work for the end product, but it's it, as it comes together, it's just really beautiful. And I can't wait to see that when it's done so I can look at it and enjoy it because I am going to frame this one. It's just too, too. I love it. I just really do. And hopefully I'll get to the second one, Illumination, Illuminated Manuscript number two. Anyway, um, so what do we do that we've been so busy? Well, in my last video, I told you that every weekend in February is filled. So the first weekend in February, we went to Austin for a Society for Creative Anachronisms event called Candlemas. And it was a fun day. It always is. That event is very fun. Um, and they had an arts and science competition, which means that you bring what, anything that they would have done in the medieval period, Renaissance period, uh, for like work, then we're doing it for fun. So you come on, bring it down and enter in a competition. It's judged on a judging sheet. So you're really in competition only against yourself because it's you can't uh, really judge apples and oranges and, you know, our shoes and food. You know, you can't say which is better. So you're really in competition against yourself. You enter. And whoever comes out with the top score usually wins. I say usually <laughs> because there was a glitch this time. So anyway, so we get down there. And in the society, I'm, uh, I've reached this level where I'm called a laurel. Uh, and that's within the arts and science community. It's like a knight in fighting, but this is for the arts and science. I'll try not to do my hand too much. Anyway, um, so I have I, I, have, I have an apprentice, which is someone I'm working to get uh, to where I am. And I have a student. And that's where someone who's like, I might want to be your apprentice. Let's, let's see if this works out. And we usually give them a year uh, time span to see if it's something you want to do. If you want to be my apprentice and let me help you get there. Or you want to find another lorem. So I had Robert, my husband, entering, and my apprentice and my student both entering, and they all did very well. Um, Robert, however, uh, scored a perfect score. He scored a 50, and that just was, he deserved it. And as a matter of fact, in the man cave, what he, what he did a perfect score on is what I'm going to show you today. Um, but uh, it's not only about the art, it's about the research and documenting the art. Doing what they did in period, how they did it, using as much material as you can in today. You know, if you, of course, something like mercury, you're not going to use. Um, but you try to get as close as you can to make that product. Uh, it To me, it's fun. I enjoy every minute of it. I enjoy being an artisan. I enjoy being a laurel. I enjoy creating. I enjoy seeing other people's creations. Um, so anyway, the Austin trip, he scored a perfect score. We were all thrilled. However, he did not win the competition because there was a mess up uh, with the names. And so the guy who won, he's a great artisan. It's, and it, and Timor, Timor is, is Robert, but we call him Timor in the SCA. Um, he has a great attitude about it. He's like, I know I scored a, I know that I scored a perfect score. I know my product is there. And so, you know, I, I don't, it doesn't bother me that much. So anyway, so that was that weekend. The next weekend we went to Abilene and this is for what we call a kingdom wide uh, event. It is uh, most of Texas. Uh, Texas that's in the mountain time zone is not part of Onstor. It's part of the Outlands, but all of Oklahoma is. So it's quite a big event. You know, these people travel quite a distance and it was in Abilene. So we traveled down and yes, it was nasty coming home Sunday morning. But, oh, Lord, it was cold and it was a little slushy and snowy and icy in some places, a little spooky. But we stayed Saturday night so we wouldn't have to drive in it as tired as we were 
uh, we would at least drive in it the next morning, the daylight refreshed and making it home. So we get there and the same people, uh, my apprentice, my student in Timor and a couple other people we know from this area uh, entered. Uh, um, and Robert scored very well. He didn't score a perfect score, but they judged really tight. I think he should have scored a little bit better than what he did. But, you know, it's, it's judges, you know, it's sub subjective. You know, you can't do anything about it. So but anyway, he scored high enough that now he's he's going to represent our kingdom in this large event uh, in March. And it is it is uh, it is worldwide. Actually, you can come from anywhere in the world for this event. It's thousands of people and it's in Mississippi. And I think of Kitten Stitcher and Jen Snitch. Stitch a niche when I think of Mississippi, um, but it's in Mississippi. It's week long. Uh, people come in from all over the place and there's a big arts and science competition there. And so he was chosen to represent on Stuart. There was five people chosen and he was one of them. So very proud of him for that. Uh, the other art there was inspiring. It's just the 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 art itself, but the research and documenting it, how they would have did it is it'll blow your mind. I, I love it. I love going and I love seeing what the artisans are doing. So anyway, uh, so that was last year. Now this coming weekend is Mother Earth News, a uh, big thing. And we love going to that. We might not go because um, we want to get some more things done for the end of March, which is my vigil. Uh, and we, Robert brewed a batch of beer, over five gallons of beer for that day. And then this weekend, he's going to brew another batch. So, well, we've got things to do. So we might not make that and we might just stay at home and actually work. That ain't fun. We'll do something fun. We'll, we'll have fun. We'll, the kids are playing airsoft. It's just me and him. We'll go do something. That'll be great. So anyway, we've been busy, busy, busy. We have brewed some beer. And when it gets all brewed up and beautiful and we put it in containers, I might... Um, might film in the afternoon because beer in the morning is just a little tough for me. I don't drink beer normally anyway, but I will taste his and sample a little bit of his. Uh, I might pour a little bit so y'all can see just how beautiful uh, his beer is. He he makes great tasting beer and it's just beautiful, thick, lovely uh, beer. Look, you can see my eye. Okay, I think I might try that for a little bit. I went from the dark side to the light side. Anyway, okay, back, focus, Sherry, focus. Uh, 2018 plans. That changed. I'm still on the course. Of course, I allowed my course to be wonky if need be, and that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. I found something, and it'll come to that later, that I had to throw into my whips or started as a whip anyway. Um, so I'm, it's going good. I am really, really, really uh, working on cross stitching 365 days this year. Uh, my go to break it down is to at least cross stitch on something for 365 days. But my illuminated manuscript, I definitely want to stitch on every day. And I talked about that just earlier. So um, if I get, if I really don't feel like cross stitching, at least I'll put a couple of stitches or a few stitches into my illuminated manuscript and move on. Normally I work on the, um, I work on little pieces during out the day when I got time, when Robert's home at night. And then when everybody goes to bed, I'll work on the illuminated manuscript. Um, so my plans there is still moving ahead. I have managed to do it every day, even when we were in, um, all, uh, Abilene, I put 21 stitches in to the Illuminate Manuscript. 21 stitches. Doesn't sound like a lot, but I move forward, and I'm thrilled about that. Um, Daisy is with me today. I know y'all probably noticed her. Um, I don't think little Daisy's feeling so good today. Um, last night, she she's a cuddle bud, and she didn't cuddle last night. She wanted to get at the end of the bed and just kind of look. You know how they drop their heads, and they're just looking. But I could tell she didn't feel good. She didn't throw up or anything like that, and she's eating and drinking fine. So, She's, uh, it's not going to be a vet trip, but um, I just think, you know, she's just not up to par. So anyway, but she is here with me today because she needs cuddles and loves and she's uh, not active like she usually is. So you can see that she's a little down and can you see she's got her little head hidden in there. Well, there her is. There's my Daisy. There's my old girl. Yeah. Okay. So enough about Daisy. So let's just uh, move into whips. Like I said, this is not going to be a long video. And that's okay because that means it doesn't take as long to upload and my internet connection sucks. So last time 
I showed you Oak Glory and was all thrilled. I got the, uh, I had everything. I had the fabric, the pattern, the, the threads. And I made the statement that and this will hopefully be done in the next video. Well, it might have, but um, I threw something in the mix that kind of took my attention. I did get some done on it, though. And this is where I'm at with it. I think that I love it. It is everything that I wanted it, uh, that I, it's everything that I thought it would be when I started stitching on it. And I'm absolutely loving it. I love working on it, uh, but you'll see why I've gotten off that in just a minute. So one more time. Oh, glory. Wasn't even started the last time, but at least I got that done on it. Oh, lately messed up. Um, now, I did have February started the last time you saw it, uh, but I really think, what would I have? I had the border, and I think I had just some of the white here in this. I don't know if I had the flowers. I had very little, but this is just so close to being complete. It really only needs some more green down here and then one more layer of the uh, blue stitch. And that is just one, not even one whole stitch of the green. I'm almost done with the green. I'm, I've got that, that much to go with the green. And then one stitch, one line of uh, the blue. So, I mean, it is just that stinking close to being finished. And had I not gotten tired and wanted to work on my aluminum manuscript to make sure I got stitched in it last night, I probably would have finished this. But it's okay. We'll be finished today. So, and y'all get to see it finished next week, which is all good. All righty, so next one, of course, is my illuminated manuscript. You know, I've stitched a lot on this, and I've gotten a lot done, and I've still got a lot to do. Um, it might have been a little ambitious for me to start this when I just got into cross stitch, um, but I've learned a lot. There's a lot of mistakes on it, but I'm not. I don't worry about that because you know one of the things that I can look at when it's finished is it was um, it was a big piece for me to undertake. It was one of my first pieces of cross stitch. I absolutely adore it. It looks great. And unless you know the pattern, unless you see the pattern, you won't know my mistakes. So I'm not even worried about it. So anyway, here we go. I've taken it out of the cube style for us all. So I have to probably go like this and roll it up. Now, y'all saw all of this. Where I was last time was down in this corner area. Right down in there. Let me tell you, there's a lot of stuff in that little corner. It is a handful. It really is. Um, uh, like some of these leaves have two colors in them. They have to change the colors. Then you have to outline it. Um, then I've got some French knots up in here. But it just takes a lot of time. I'm enjoying it, but it takes a lot of time. So I think last night I actually finished this corner. So uh, tonight or today, whenever I work on it, uh, I will probably move my cue step over and continue working this way. And I'll get into this corner. And this corner has a gentleman playing an instrument in it right here. So I like working on the little motifs. So that'll be fun to get that going. And then I will just have to struggle through all the leaves because there's a lot of them um, you see like I can't do this right okay you see like on this side over here that's got like that's all over here too and it's on the front uh Pam from Stephanie and Pam uh asked on my Facebook page she goes do you always do the outlines and then fill it in like nope <laughs> normally I do that and then do the outline why I did that I really have no clue. I think I had black thread on my uh, needle and just was going for it. Um, I was probably tired, wanted to get something stitched on it, and had a brain fart. I'm just going to blame it on a brain fart. But anyway, so that is what, where I'm at on Illuminated Manuscript. Like I said, this piece is, it's gorgeous. I love it. So, that is all the whips that I showed you on oh, sixth day of Christmas. Haven't touched it um, because I got into what I'm fixing to show you next. Um, I saw it on a couple of people's Facebook and I can't remember exactly how I think mischievous stitches showed it. But anyway, it is Caroline Ber Berringer Summer House Stitchworks pattern. Okay. 
I wanted to do this was the colors spoke to me, the a sampler piece spoke to me, and it's worked in wools. So I was like, I really want to do that. I don't want to do it in DMC. I want to do it in the wools. So it cost me a pretty penny, but I'm okay with that. So I went to my needle worker shop and I said, do you have this? She actually found it for me. And then I said, I want to get the wools. And she said, you got them bagged up already. So I went over there and got a little package of that. And you'll see that this is why Oh Glory's not finished. And uh, what was the other one? February didn't quite get done. It's because I had to work on this. I love it. It's turning out so beautiful. Stop it. Can't help look at it. But look at the colors. They're so bright. And then when I was checking out, though, there were some more patterns from her and the new releases sitting up on the counter. And I was like, oh, I want them. But I contained myself and I said, nope, I'm going to get the fabric, the pattern, and the floss. And that cost me enough. So <laughs> I didn't need to get anything else, let me tell you. Um, so anyway, that is my whips. That is my new purchases and my new whip. Um, I just needed it. I saw it and I needed it. And there's a few other things that I've saw recently that I think I need. We'll see. My goal is to get, um, I got to get some of this finished. But when I'm doing the monthly, like the January, February, I'm always going to have something on that series come back into the rotation. So if when February gets done, I'm not like, yeah, I can start something different because now March is coming in. And I really, 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 really want to do uh, have the 12 days of Christmas done by Christmas and the I do a monthly um, February, March, a monthly piece, a series. So um, if any gets behind, it'll probably be the monthly series. But I'm OK if it gets behind because, you know, I love the other stuff, too. But she's got to get some love in here. I'm sorry. Um, so what else have I done? This is going to lead me into. My medieval side. Like I said, I'm up to 17 minutes and there's just not a lot to talk about. So my medieval side. I uh, had a friend bring me something to put on my garb or my clothing. She's probably going to love it. And you saw the little boogers over here, if you've been paying attention. Look at that. Look at his face. Look at Daisy's interest. That's why they're up high. Um, hey, Daisy. How are you? Anyway, you see his little ears and everything. So there's like three with faces and one without a face because her dog got hold of it. But I'm going to work on something. I don't know what I'm going to do with that yet. I was going to make it um, fur for my dress, but um, another plan has come up. So I've got these. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, um, but they're kind of cool. They're so cool. I might paint their face and jewel them up because that is a, it is a period. I think it, Italian thing. I, there's a name for them, and I can't think of the name. And I probably couldn't say it if I did think of it. So, medieval side, it's taken care of. We had our book skill meeting this last week, and we did all did the same recipe and came back with the uh, just um, to we had to interpret it, I'll translate it, redact it, and then cook it. And what it boils down to is a sweet chicken pudding and rice pudding, sweet chicken rice pudding. Um, it was quite yummy, but the way people interpreted it was kind of interesting. I am a believer of uh, we do it as our ancestors wrote it down as much as they wrote it down. And um, don't change it for a modern palate unless we're feeding, unless you're paying nine, eight dollars, eight, nine dollars for a feast. Then I might not serve you sweet chicken rice pudding, but that make it savory. Um, but anyways, not, it was interesting to see. The research, I did a lot of research in it before I, I presented it and uh, to see how everybody else interpreted it. Where I interpreted uh, when I translated it and I did my research, um, one of the things that they said was plenty of sugar. So I made mine really sweet because I said plenty of sugar. I, what their mindset was for plenty of sugar, who knows? It's a random guess. Uh, some people didn't put any sugar in it at all. Some people just put a tad of sugar in it. Um, that, you know, it's how we interpret it. And how we, our mind thinks about it. it um, you know, it's how we are raised influences how we redact these recipes. I love spicy stuff from the way I was raised. Uh, some people like things very bland the way they were raised. So you say a lot of whatever, a lot to me is like, hook me up. And a lot to some people was like, oh, that's slow down a little bit, tiger, slow down. So anyway, we had that. That was a fun night. We had a good time. Um, now, um, 
going to lead us into the man cave. Poor Daisy. And these are what my husband scored a perfect score on in uh, the first weekend. These are all handmade. This is, we'll go this first. This is the pattern. It's got pretty little detail in there. You see that it's handmade? He punches those holes with an awl. He's done this for so long. They're pretty freaking even too. But anyway, um, so you have your pattern and it's like a riser, riser to keep your nice shoes out of the muck of the city because there was no sanitation rules. Well, there were some, but um, it was mucky in the city. So people just threw things out windows and uh, they did have ordinances where like the butcher shop had to dispose of their butchers and they would take it down to the river and throw it in the river, but at least it wasn't on the street, I guess. I don't know. But the streets were mucky, ucky, nasty places. Um, and so you had your patent and then you had your shoe. Shoes were expensive items. Um, so you didn't want to get them dirty and ruin them. Once again, these are turn shoes. I know a little bit about them because I hear him talk about it. Like he knows a little bit about cooking, but they're put on a last, which is a wooden form of your foot, the inside of your shoe kind of thing. And they're stitched on that. And then when he gets to a certain point, he flips them out. Um, but look at all that detail on that. He used materials. He ordered uh, leather that was from a place that still does it as close as period as we can get nowadays. The coloring, you might think the coloring's off, but he did a, uh, I'll call period, which is our SCA time period, mm -hmm. technique for dyeing that um, he wanted it redder, but this is what he got. It's what you get, you know. So anyway, he ordered the buckles so that the buckles would, would match the time period. And the stitching in that is just, it's amazing. Let's see again. So there is a pair. Of course, I've only shown you one that isn't that gorgeous. So he's going to wear these to my elevation. He's probably not going to wear the patents because I like wearing high heels. But anyway, so man cave. So my man does it all. He does woodwork. He does a lot of the work. He makes shoes. He makes cowboy boots. He brews beer. I got it made. Mama can get drunk and wear pretty shoes. Anyway, I really don't drink. I just like to act like I do. So that was my man cave. Update on my food videos that's going to be coming in on the channel. I do have one that I have filmed, but I'm having a really difficult time with this editing and program. I really am not enjoying it, and it's more complicated than what I really want. I wanted something more simple. So I don't know what I'm going to do with that because I want to. I want to be able to to get these done and I'm being held up by my own not knowing the program. Uh, if I had knew someone who knew the program, he could show me a few things. I'd probably pick it up, but I'm having a, a little issue with that. So the food videos are still coming and they're just uh, they're in the queue waiting until I can get my head wrapped around all of this. Um, next thing, well, of course, is our shout outs. Um, I've only got a couple of shout outs. Um, you okay? You're sick on me. Um, it was just a burp. Um, one, and with this transferring over my new, uh, new computer, I was keeping a tally of the people that I had shouted out so I could just dig it up and look. Uh, and I didn't think about it until after I started recording. I could have went back and looked at my previous videos and maybe make sure I didn't double dip here. Um, if I did, I am sorry for anybody out there that I've not shouted out that I, because I really, really, really want to shout out uh, beginning floss tubers. Um, not so much people who have thousands of subscribers, but people who really have under a thousand subscribers, under 500 subscribers, because there's some wonderful art out there that um, you get noticed quickly. Like I've said in another video, if you have friends who already do floss tube videos, for an example, if you have a friend, um, if if you're friends with Michelle Bindi, Pam or Steph, people like that, uh, and they say, you really should make a floss tube video, and you do, they're going to shout it out immediately. And that person's going, because people look at what these high subscribed floss tubers, what they say. And, and so searching, sometimes they just look at who what they uh, shout out. 
and they go, look, so um, these people who come in with a, not having uh, that in their under their belt, um, they they don't get as recognized as fast. Um, there are some, and I gotta say, Case Corner Craft Corner, I think is her name. She does a wonderful job of. Uh, she calls them flu flubies for newbies, flubies. Um, she does a wonderful job. Now her last video, she she was out of town and on vacation, so she was a little behind on it. But she's she's promised that she's going to catch up for the new people. She does a wonderful job of calling out new floss tubers. And I've seen uh, right lately, I've seen a whole, uh, it's happened on several occasions that some of the subscribers that have over a thousand, two thousand, three thousand have forgotten to do shout outs. And to me, that's important because I just think that I, I, I need, I feel like these people should be encouraged. I know I'm kind of weird this way and this is not like a fussing at, at anybody video. It's just very important that when you get started and you're, 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 uh, you're seeing somebody uh, that is just has just started making videos and you've been making them for a while, and they're getting more subscribers faster than you, and it might not necessarily be you. It just might be that they fell into someone's eyesight and they got shouted out. And so I just want these people to know that it's not them. And I've even saw one uh, boss tuber talk about it. What am I doing wrong? Sorry, excuse me. I'm going to hang up a minute. What am I doing wrong? Um, is there something in my video you don't like? I'm not getting subscribers. And my heart went out for this person because I'm like, no, you're doing wonderful. Your art is beautiful. You you speak plainly. I understand everything you're saying. Um, it just You need to get probably shouted out by some people that have really high subscribers so people will see you because there's so many floss tubes so many now that you get lost in the shuffle and you don't fall into the algorithm of, of it and you don't get in front of people's face so you really need that um you need shout outs really from the the people who get watched the most um not saying y'all don't do a good job please don't take this people who have a thousand two thousand three thousand don't take this like i'm beating you up or anything like that Everybody gets, these days gets so uh, offended by everything. This is not meant to be that way. This is meant to be um, an encouragement for the people who are struggling and they want more subscribers and they want they want confirmation that they're doing okay. And I think that's what it is. So I look for the people in that area and I try to shout them out. Here's the thing. I don't have that many subscribers. So my shout out really uh, doesn't, I advance them very much or help them but you know what but it makes me feel better that I'm trying to help them anyway and that's just that's the person I am and that's what I and that's what I try to do so in saying that I still don't watch a lot of stitch with me videos because I want to focus on uh lost tubers who are are new so case crafting corner I believe it's her who does she loves the pansies she does a wonderful job and I appreciate you so much for doing that for some of these uh new floss tubers um I am not, like I said, I'm not trying to stop anybody or tell anybody they're not doing a good job. That's not what I'm doing at all. I'm just uh, trying to encourage people. And sometimes people get offended by what I say, but you know what? Guess what? There's a ah, stop button if I offend you or something like that. So anyway, I will get off my soap, my soap box and uh, do my shout outs now. Sherry's Crafty Corner. Uh, she showed her Mermaid of the Pearls uh, that she has done previously, and it was absolutely beautiful, gorgeous. I loved it. Oh, man, it was just pretty. She does, She has done some small winter, uh, some, uh, winter smalls, and they're, they're beautiful. She's done some other uh, work that she's shown on her video, and, and she does beautiful work. Go check her out. Um, the other one is Helen D. Um, I want to say she's on an East Coast Stitcher on Instagram. I want to say that. Um, but she is working on her evergreen uh, prairie schooler. Um, she's did some color changes in it, and I dig it. I like it. I like what she's done. Um, she has dyed some of her own uh, fabric for the chalkboard. Um, but the best, best, and it just cracked me up, was at the end of her last video, she does this little shot of her kitten in this. Their kit, her cat's got to be the size of Daisy has to be and the basket has to be like this and that cat is curled up in that basket and just looking at her like leave me alone 
<laughs> I'm in my happy place. Just leave me alone. So if you watch her, make sure you get to the very end of that video so you can see that cat in the basket. It will make you smile. It will make your day. Uh, and she does wonderful work in cross stitch and she's just got that beautiful personality. Um, I enjoyed her. Um, so I think with that, I'm not going to ramble on anymore. I'm just going to say put some thread in a needle and get to stitching. Y'all have a wonderful day. I'll see you back in two weeks. Uh, I'll still be busy, but I'll see you back in two weeks.